What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. This is a podcast from Minute Media. Hashtag no music, no intro. Name of this fucking pod episode was fucking Pete Ryan. (laughs) And not not Pete. Not Andrew's Pete. Not Andrew's Pete. Not Pete Warner. <laughs> Pete fucking Carmichael. I want I wanted to be before we I'm gonna preface this by saying we're gonna, we're gonna light them up, bro, because we, we, we need to light them up. I like Pete Carmichael. We'll preface it, I like Pete Carmichael, good dude, was Sean Payton's right hand man, helped him orchestrate uh an offense that had let led the Saints to great heights, and we as fans got to experience that. This man, at the end of the season, it was reported. So I'm, I'm not even reporting anything that no one, like, like this, that's not information that's privy to anyone. This man was like, you know what? Sean's going, like, fuck, like, fuck. 16 years? Yeah, I, I, I want to I just, I just want to chill. Like, you know, maybe I'll help with offensive assistant. Watch tape, you know. Hey, you know what I I still want to check. Cut me those six figures, though. But call, call plays, game plan. Hey, hey, for me. And you, and as a person, as a man, I respected it because one of the best things that you can have as a person is self reflection, and you know, and you know, like your limitations. When they right. approached Pete Carmichael to interview for head coach, Pete was like. Nah. nah. <laughs> Me? Head coach? Nah. Nah. I ain't cut out to be I ain't cut out to be no CEO. You know? No. He, he if you saw if you watch Adam, if you watch the wire, you know where that quote comes from. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, I here, how about this, bro? Before the next start, like the upcoming NFL season, I will have watched and finished the wire. Yeah, I'm not. It, it, about is, to cry. About to cry. It, is, it is declared. So I haven't I have about seven months. It is declared. I got the big 80 inch TV, even though it's not in HD, but anyway. 80, 80, 80, 82. Don't 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 say <laughs> my, my, my two inches. Right? <laughs> pay for them two pay for them two inches, nigga. Pay for that shit, nigga. <laughs> um I was today, you know, it was reported Jay Gruden interviewed, and I was like, Okay, oh, okay, Jay. Like Jay Gruden can coach some offense, bro. He's not a good head coach, no. But he was cooking with Tyler Eifert. He was cooking with with Jordan Reed. He had Andy Dalton and Kirk Cousins looking like franchise quarterbacks. I was like, all right, attacking, attacking. You know, spaces and downfield and downfield. Yeah, it it was. The funny thing about Jay Gruden that it it was a departure from Sean Payton's offense, but also was also still con- like it was, yeah, it's it was, not completely full. Like it's also some it would have been similar. It's West Coast. It's wordy. Yes. 
it's wordy language. It's uh, multiple levels in the routes. It's you know what I'm saying it's all the same shit, but it's it's different, but it's the same. You know what I'm saying? And I had convinced myself, I was like, you know what? I can get on board with a J group offensive coordinator, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, and I've been thinking here, about it all day, bro. I've been in my mind all day. Just <laughs> you too. You okay? So this this why these niggas fucking just piss me off, bro. And here's the funny thing: you and I. We don't like we care about the results on the field. We care about winning losses, but this period right here, like when games happen, ex- like, players sometimes don't execute. Yes, coaching is a big part of that. We saw in the fucking Super Bowl, fucking <laughs> Zach Taylor got that contract extension today, bro. Good <laughs> luck, Bengals fans. So coaching matters, especially on game day. It can, it can, you can win and lose games due to coaching. But a lot of it, too, is just execution on the field. So the wins and losses of things don't really bother. Well, we've been spoiled, right? Because we knew that coaching-wise on games day, we were covered. We had Sean Payton. Yeah, right. But the shit that annoys us is this shit right here. Personnel, front office decisions, because it is the crux of a team and team building and personnel. Ooh. These niggas, Sean Payton stepped down and you would have thought this man is still in the fucking building, Ryan. I swear. They have not stepped outside, I don't know, of their comfort zone. It, it, it's just, it's, every, everyone, what, what do we say? We said, we said, um, the Jacks head coach, Doug Marone. I said we said he, he probably gonna come back just in jest, but not really in jest. Boom. A couple of days later, back. Johnny Morton, back. We are interviewing Michael fucking Will Holt, the linebackers coach of the Chargers. And the Chargers, all linebackers were awful last year. The Chargers defense, especially the run defense, like pretty much kept them out of the playoffs. But guess what? Michael Michael Wilhol was with the Saints from 2019 to 2020. Huh. It is the what, who you know, when did you work with the Saints, when did you work with Sean approach. And I really, I really don't get it. It is, it is befuddling. In our all our conversations that we've done this pod, we said if DA was the head coach, what was our number, our number one concern? Everything was going to fucking say the same. No, no, no juice, no spice. Yes. Just run it all back. And I feel a little played because they had, they were like, oh, Scotty Montgomery, oh, this yeah. Robert yeah. Pri- Prince, oh, Jay Gruden. That's what pisses I, me off. Why don't y'all just do, and that's, it's like a Saints game, right? To me, the, the offensive head co- the offensive coordinator search was a Saints game. Start off real bad, tie it up, take a lead, get get fans like, oh shit, we coming back, we coming back, and then blow it in the fucking fourth quarter within two minutes. Right? <laughs> That's what this hire was. You know what? I, I want to be the give me the Bills game from this past season, bro. Just blow me the fuck out. Y'all should have said it was right. from jump and from jump. From jump. Cause we all expected it from jump. Like, you're we, like okay, he's gonna get Pete. Go get Pete. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna elevate somebody from the staff. You know, or bringing somebody from the staff for the uh, defense and go run it back to 2007 and keep it going. That's what we all expected. But then they're like, oh, let's look at Eric B. Enemy. Oh, let's look at this guy. Let's look at Jay Gruden. Let's look at. And it's like, okay, they dipping their foot in the water. Okay. Because I was getting impressed. I was like, okay, well, maybe DA gets it. Maybe he says, okay, we do need some fresh talent. And he's looking at your boy Montgomery, you know, college coach and NFL coach and stuff like that. I was like, okay. You know, I'm feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I don't have to like the high. I don't have to love the name or not, but at least they're out there looking. You know what I'm saying? But then or to do all that, just be like, eh, let's just keep what we got in the building. <laughs> like, and, like, like, what? Not only that, you had a person who had made a self-reflection that he didn't want to be offensive coordinator. That's the killer. What what does like have you ever been in a position like you're at a job 
and, or, or wherever you work, and you have, you know, maybe you decide not to take promotion, whatever, and a company has to basically make it worth your while to do whatever you knew that you didn't want to do. Like, what, what does that say? You tell me this man didn't want to be OC and then two, three weeks pass, and then now he wants to be OC again? What happened in those two or three weeks? They offer them more money. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I said, look, bro, we'll give you an extra 20, uh, 250K. You know, we'd rather give you that than pay Jay Gruden, you know, $3 million a year or whatever it is he wanted because Jay Gruden's going to need to get paid. Oh, for sure. So that's what it came down to. And it's, it just comes down to, like, are you trying to improve? This is a league that is constantly evolving. It's a progressive league um, where they change the rules every year. They're constantly trying to tweak and improve the game. And it's usually on offense. And it's like they're just like, man, we like that crew we had back in 2008. <laughs> We was vibing in the locker room, you hear me? <laughs> so they just running it back to that, man. It's like, what about the product on the field, man? Like, what what are you trying to do? These running these corner these quarterbacks coming out of college have wheels, have legs. They they you know they observe the game differently. Who are you bringing in that could view the quarterback position through their eyes? Mm-hmm. Who are you bringing in that can give you a upgraded run game? You know, the run games of the NFL. Or always been behind college. College is college has always had a better run game scheme than the NFL. You know who's bringing in that? Who's you know trying to try some different things in the running game? You know who's coaching? You know all the different ways you could uh, attack space. You know, like Sean Payton was a master at that. He understood that very well. That's out the building. Who's doing that now? Is it Pete? Like does Pete? have that understanding of offense to that. Like, like you could draw plays, man. Like, anybody could draw plays and say, oh, let's do this, run this route, blah, 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 blah. But you have to really understand how to teach it. Mm. And are you bringing in teachers? Like, I don't know. Like, if Peter teacher, I said on a Discord, like, I've listened to days worth of Saints player interviews just over the years. Just listen to everybody. I don't care who they be a little special teams player. I listen to interviews. That's what I do. It's sick. I know it. I do it anyway. <laughs> but I, I just never. I just thought about. It. I was like, I've never heard any offensive player be like, "Man, Pete Carmichael, man, Pete." Nobody like except Drew. And you understand him and Drew grew up together. He was the he was the offensive quality assistant with the Chargers. They about the same age. It's like you know they just grew up together. That was his guy. You know what I'm saying? So Drew would always mention like, "Oh, Pete, yeah, Pete." But man, like as far as like coaching, like what did you bring to the table? Like even like um I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was Chris Collinsworth or or uh, Aikman or somebody. They're like, man, we've talked to Pete like a million times over the past ten years, and he just says like three words and gets out of there in their little you know in their little meetings during the week or whatever. Like you know, nobody knows Pete, man. So and look, bro, at the end of the day, we could be completely wrong. Maybe Pete a whole yes. dog. Old dog was just waiting for Sean Payton to get out the building and just got all kind of shit coming. We could be completely wrong, man. But it's like looking at what he showed us, is like uh. what what's 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 the phrase? What's the saying, man? The past is a, is indicative of the of the, of the future. Uh, of the future, of the future. And Bro, you know, we got almost two decades. And it's um, not just about calling plays, neither. People are like, oh, he called plays when Sean Payton got hurt in 2011. And he was lighting them up. I know. He was. But n- once n- Sean n- Payton was pe- there. Oh. People are, like, quoting something that was 11 years ago. <laughs> he also called plays in 20, 2012. And I'm like, Drew Brees was calling them plays 2012. I'm sorry. Like, that, was, that was Drew Brees. And anyways, it's not just about calling plays. It's about teaching, you know, and laying the foundation of an offense that's going to be the culture of an offense, playing tough, you know, fighting through injury. You know what I'm saying? Like Sean Payton would – it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but Sean Payton would be on certain players' ass and be like, man, you got to play through that little knee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, is Pete going to do that? Is Pete going to walk up to you like, 
Pete gonna walk up to you, fucking, I don't know, Michael Thomas, be like, man, you need her now. Like, man, I need you to tighten that shit up, man. We need you this week. Like, Pete gonna do that? You know, is Mike Thomas gonna respect Pete? Like, <laughs> I just don't know, man. I just, I just, I, I just keep thinking, right? In the heat of a game, you know, we need, we, we down four points. We get the ball, uh, offense, and is Pete going to go over to the offense and say, you know what, guys, this is it. This is our shot. This is our chance. We got this shit. We're going to get this ball, take it down the field, and score a fucking touchdown. Uh-huh. Is Pete Carmichael going to do that, bro? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in in uh, hours of film and hours. fucking uh, NFL films, mic'd up, nothing like <laughs> Never, never heard Pete on the mic though. You're <laughs> and I, I want to go back to what you said about because it's 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 to my next point, and I think it was brilliant, brilliantly and beautifully said that the the game is changing. The game's been changed. RPOs, whatever, whatever. Right? We we know how the game has changed. Quarterback. You know, now now if you're a quarterback coming into the league and you're a pocket passer, you don't make plays off scrimmage, now you're being looked at funny, which is wild, yeah. bro. Just wild has the the how the pendulum has, has swung. The McVay tree is like half the league right now. Shit. Ain't that ain't that fucking crazy, bro? It's okay. It's LA, Vikings, Dolphins, Green Bay. Oh fuck, Green Bay. Well, Green Bay is more, I think Green Bay is more of a, a Shanahan tree. Yeah, Whatever. but man, it, it, it yeah. all combines, bro. Green, like, Green, so- Green Bay, Chargers. Ugh, just ugh. Whatever. So, so here's here here's why coaching matters. I on on Monday had a very hard day, you know, doing my career, you know, out in the field. Finally was able to take lunch at 2, 2 p.m. out like in the Antelope Valley in the boonies. There's a great Mexican place out in Lancaster. Have some of the best carne asada. That's steak, Ryan. Nachos. Um, so anytime I'm out there, I, tr- I stop and get them. So this was the day after the Super Bowl. Go in, sit at the bar, don't get a drink because I'm on the clock and I have to go see a family after, after lunch. But I get some nachos. Guess what they have on fucking Super Bowl repeat on, like, NFL Network, like, condensed. I'm watching that game. Didn't want to watch it because fuck the rounds, but I'm watching that game. And this is why coaching matters. And I'm, and I'm not saying Pete don't have it in him. I'm not saying that. This is why coaching matters. 49, or no, the Rams are driving the ball where they eventually score a touchdown. Bullshit penalty, but eventually score a touchdown. Fourth and one, bruh. Cheeks are tight. You because if you don't get it, like you basically your defense, the defense has to not allow, like not allow Cincinnati to, to move any forward or else you're fucked. Game, so you know, you just lost two. Right. Fourth and one. McVeigh calls a uh, like a sweet motion, ghost mm-hmm. action, hands it. I know exactly, to what, I know exactly Cup. what you're talking about. Yeah. Cooper Cup, he does just enough. He gets, he gets the block on the right side that he needed, gets just enough to convert on fourth down. Boom. Drive keeps going. Flip, flip that shit to a minute 30 seconds. It's 31. I've tweeted about this because the, the reason I tweeted it because I saw it again. And it just didn't make no sense to me, Ryan. It just didn't make no sense. <laughs> it is third and fucking one. And Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor runs a halfback dive <laughs> with fucking Samaj J. P. Ryan. It, it, no, Joe Mixon wasn't hurt. I, I think uh, Didi Kikawala confirmed that. He's, he's just on the sideline. Third was and one. Even, was there even a motion? Like, no, no, <laughs> just, just the and you know what makes it worse, bro? You know what makes it worse, Ryan? He ran it right at fucking Aaron Donald, bro. Of all people, of all people, coaching matters. I'm not shitting on Pete. I'm not. So it goes to the bigger issue. What you're saying, there needs to be a 
fresh eyes on talent because we can shit on coaching all we want. At the end of the day, it's really about players. Coaching matters too, but it's about players. So my question is, who, who is putting their eyes on this offensive talent, free agency, draft, self-scouting, <clears throat> Reese, and exactly. making exactly. fucking decisions? Because this offseason – Pete, Pete walking in there saying, "Come on, I man. Can't play with, I can't play with Reese. Talk about it. I, I, can't, I can't run my offense with Reese. I need a I need a fucking I need a fucking wide receiver that can run that can run this route like this. You know, this player who, can't. No, this who, you who, got this. Who, you, who's doing but, it? Like is is Pete Carmichael an uh, offensive a talent evaluator? I don't know. I've never I, heard him mention. I, I've never I, heard mention like Pete really liked this guy coming out of so and so state. <laughs> I just never heard it. I've heard that about other coaches. I've heard Aaron Glenn liking Marcus Peters or, you know, certain players I've heard about. Dennis Allen liking certain players I've heard about. I've never heard Pete. Pete Carmichael. Man, this is Pete, Mar- Pete Carmichael's guy. Dude. Yeah. I just – and if it's not Pete, then then the question is who? Who? Because this is, this is the question of this offseason. And it's funny. When I saw Pete, when I saw Pete, Get get the OC. I was like, these these niggas about to bring in Jenny G. I'm just preparing myself, bro. Just preparing myself. Um, I, I I just everything about this team since Sean has stepped down has been literally we, like we could have wrote it out ourselves, bro. Like this is going to happen. This is going. Uh, uh, uh. Nothing is going from from off off script. It may not matter, and all this bitching and this ranting may be for naught. If they go out and get some players in, on offense, they could, you know, in the draft, free agency, and they can play on offense and play well on offense. We are we when we are wrong, we are the first first people to say we're wrong. We were wrong on Pete Warner. We fucking we were wrong. We we fucked up. We got it wrong. Sorry, Pete Warner. You're good. Apologies to you. So we, and we have no problem eating crow. We don't like shitting on the Saints and their decisions because we're fans of the Saints. We want them to do well. But, like, right. when when things, like, I guess predictable things just happen, and, it, and I felt like Sean stepping down was for the first time in 16 years, the team and organization had a chance to say, cool, this, this was the ride, this is what it was, but now – we have a chance to change things up. I, I'm not. Right. Even, I wasn't even asking for a lot of change. I, right. I didn't. I didn't expect a new head coach. I really didn't. But at <laughs> least, like you would think, like the staff would be a little mixed up. You know what I'm mixed saying? Up, like, hey, let's 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 look at where we at now, and how can we get better? Let's look at the league. Let's look at where we at. How can we get better from what we was doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see why that's such a problem. Like, look. Sean did a great job. He instituted a culture. It'd be crazy to like destroy that culture and just bring in like and just blow it up. You know, it'd be crazy to do that. You didn't need to blow it up, you know, because there's a lot of good things in place, you know, and consistency, uh, consistency does matter. Getting along with your fellow coaches and coaching staff in front office and all that does matter. It does play a part, but you have to have like the you know, the nuts, I guess, you know, in your in confidence in your leadership to say, I know what's best. Like, as you know, Dennis Allen, you're the CEO now, bro. You have to have the nuts to say, I know what's best to leave this team. And right now, I'm not seeing those nuts, bro. I'm seeing like, uh, kind of like Sean Payton, like, I'm just going to run it back with Sean Payton did because that should work. Uh oh. You know? Mm-mm. That's what I'm saying. Like, where the nuts at? Is you know, like somebody it, pointed out in my mentions, like Jason Garrett. It's like, yeah, bro. Like, it's it's that. You know, is is this is this Den, Den's Allen's team or is this Sean still having like, bro? This is this is Palpatine, bro. This yeah. name, Sean and Sean and cloned himself. <laughs> Somehow, Sean Payton returned, bro. <laughs> 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 mm. 
dark, dark magic. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I, I, I want to. I, I keep going back to the point of who's picking this offensive tower. So I'm looking at a list of players that Jeff Ireland drafted when he was with the Dolphins. Now again, Jeff Ireland has, you know, I, I believe that time off from the Dolphins has really, you know, he's really locked in and become one of the better personnel draft decision makers, you know, in terms of evaluating talent. But with the Dolphins, bro, bro looking at some of these picks, and I'm the like, thing is, and the thing is, we have it's impossible to know how those picks will turn out now, especially with Sean Payton, because Sean Payton, you know, mm-hmm. with the offensive players, he's gonna be like, no, I like this guy, no, no, I, I can't coach this guy, you know, he had his foot in the door. For most of them, you know, some were good, some were bad. It's not like all of them were good either. But uh, we don't know, man. It's like it's like a black hole. I mean, it re- it really is like a black hole. Like, is, is Pete is Pete gonna go fly out to Tennessee Uh-oh. and work out and work out Evan Kamara? Like, hey, bro, like I know you've been basically used as just like a downhill running back, but you know, can you run these? Let me see how you look, run these routes. These route concepts, how you run this route tree, and then analyze and look at it like, ooh, ooh okay, ooh, well, I like how you running these routes. Like, is Pete gonna do that? Pete, Pete going to to Virginia to scout and and put Malik Willis through a private workout. Hmm. I, I, I no. don't know. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> the rookie, the rookie quarterback is off the. Off the list to me right now, man. They're not. They're not drafting the rookie. They're not. Mm-mm. I mean, if they do, it's not going to be. It's for sure not going to be round one. No, no, it'll be some Sam fucking how in the second round. Some shit, you know what I'm saying? Just some bullshit. But it's not going to be like we select. We found our guy. We're going to get our guy. We're going to build around him. It's not going to be that. It, it will go against everything they've shown me so far. Mm-mm. Talk about it, bro. Talk about it. I mean, it's safe, man. Like they don't. They don't. They want safety. So, like you said, Jimmy Garoppolo. I can see them doing that. Bring James back. You know, it's gonna be something like that, man. Something that's not a gamble. You know, hey, we just put a good run game around them. You know, get some good plays out of them. You know, give them a good pass catcher. Maybe MT comes back, play good defense. We'll be fine. It's that. Like that's what we're doing. I'm steady, bro. I put it on Twitter. I put it out in the universe. I don't know why. At this point, bro, if, if the Colts are just going to cut Carson Wentz, fuck it, bro. Just, I, want, I want this season to just be comical. Bring in Carson Wentz and just go and just just go crazy. I don't, I don't care. Because <laughs> at that point, like, Carson Wentz would be hella cheap. Like, he's cut. Yeah. Cut. You know, the same thing get up Upwards of like thirty. If they do like their max max restructures, they could do upwards of like get up to about twenty nine mil, thirty five mil in cash base. Yeah, man. Yeah. You get, you get Carson Wentz cut from the Colts on a super cheap deal, and then Ooh. then you maybe go go get Mike Gesicki. You can you can uh, for sure probably extend Marcus. Like, come on, man. Yeah. If we gonna be safe, I want to be safe and chaotic on on game days. <laughs> When we were doing the re- when we doing the recap pods, I want to start the podcast and be like, ha, nigga, you won't believe what Carson did today. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't care anymore, bro. <laughs> don't, oh. don't care. Um and then can, can someone give me a call? Can someone give me a Ryan a call from the same from airline? We have ideas, bro. We have not all of them are all of them are good. All of them aren't good. But we have some we've had some good ones. I I, I would say, right? One good one that I thought of a couple of days ago. One of the like he was like a the draft Twitter draft Twitter dude of like a diehard Bengals fan. And now like he covers the Bengals, I think, or whatever. Joe. Could bury whatever. Uh-huh. Know, whatever. He, he's always he's always irked me. He's not blocked, but I don't follow him. But two things: one, he 
<laughs> so when I asked if he was doing like a Twitter live show recap going over the, uh, the game, and he was like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't couldn't imagine waking up on Monday being a being a, a Bengals fan, bro. Couldn't oh, mm. oh that like that is heartbreaking just the finality of it and oh oh my god oh. And everyone's like oh but they have all the foundation in place and oh, you know how fucking hard it is to get to the Super Bowl me and my girls oh. watching the the Joe Montana uh documentary Joe Montana Joe Montana beat Dan Marino on the Super Bowl everyone was saying Dan Marino's gonna go go back Dan Marino didn't make it back to the fucking Super Bowl and never made it back bro how crazy is that Dan fucking Marino it's hard Bro, like people need to like this whole Tom Brady shit going to ten Super Bowls. That is an intense outlier. That, just, again. that doesn't happen again. Patrick Mahomes has Mahomes has been the two, close to four. He's only been the two. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks we've ever seen. Like it's hard. Um, but something that he, he tweeted was, you know, basically he was like, you know, willing, you know, you know. Someone called the Bengals and let them know they should be willing to trade like the 31st pick to for a good decent decent offensive lineman. My wheels got turning, bro. And I was like, bro, the, the Saints could fucking extend Marcus in time. And like the like where they don't have to franchise him, right? Again, they can extend him in time and franchise Teron and call up Cincy. I'd be like, Yo, y'all got Von Bell, y'all got Trey Hendrickson. You know, we hey. are. Our players doing pretty well for y'all. You know, trade y'all, to, you know, this little tag, sign, tag and trade, give y'all Tehran, y'all give us 30, 30, 31. Oh, you know, we'd be good. Because then as much, as much ranting I do, and you, you got to get these picks right. If, they, if that happened, they got to get the, the picks right. You'd have 18 and 31. You would give, have so much flexibility. You could, Oh. Take, a, take a raw receiver at 18. Maybe one of the quarterbacks start falling. And maybe maybe they don't fall all the way to 31. But if you got the 31 pick, you could just trade that, move up. You don't got to give yep. up next year's pick. You can give, maybe give up a second and leave the first round with, again, these players got to be good. Because if you miss on these picks, you're looking at that 2015 draft with Stefan and Pete. And Ooh. Pete's all right, bro. Like, he's all right, but. <laughs> that that draft could have been a whole lot better, and that's that draft was a big reason why the Saints lost to Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham trade, yeah. if you being honest about it, exactly. Um, it, it would just give them so much flexibility. But again, that would one Marcus would have to be extended in time, which means that Marcus and, and Mickey would have to iron out a deal. We've seen what's, we've seen what's happened with Carl next. We don't you know, Mickey kind of just drags his feet. You know, just you know, takes his time. I don't know, man. I, I'm just thinking of ways to get assets and get more young, good players in the draft. Because then if you have two first-round picks, I know people will say double down on offense, and I agree with that to a degree. But shit, maybe a defensive stud just falls. Just falls, yeah. bro. Yeah. And you just – that that player's so good that you got to take them, and then but you if you got another first rounder, you can still use it on offense. I'm just, they're not gonna do yeah. it because I, I know these niggas. Not, just, it's, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> never, I mean, they never approached like that, like a, a, a tag and trade. Shit, I'd be floored if they did that, bro. Smart makes plenty of sense. But if they if they tag to Ryan, that means he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all that means, bro. Like it, it, it is not happening. But I would it's, love to see something like that. You know, maybe we, they could trade a defensive player. You know, I don't know. Can we get some just some ingenuity, like just some, something, something, bro? I just feel like we just eating some stale gumbo. Like no seasoning, nothing. Just being fed here, take it, enjoy it, figure it out, figure it out. It was what I feared, man, because I told you, like I said on, you know, podcasts ago, you know, to have a chance to be kind of like, you know, Steelers, Green Bay, Mm -hmm. you know, um, even kind of like, 
early 49ers, like when they went from, you know, bro, uh, uh, Walsh to uh, George Seifert. Yep, that's exactly who it was. And it, they won like two Super Bowls with George Seifert. Like nobody gives a shit about George Seifert. <laughs> won two Super Bowls with him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like it could have been something like that. Like where you know you trans and you, you know yeah you kind of keep it in thing, but you keep on building, you keep on uh, innovating. But it seems like they're gonna go more of the route of you know the Dallas Cowboys or. Um, you know, when San Francisco went to Mariucci and then just kind of, you know, just kind of faded away eventually. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep in, innovating, man. Like this is an innovative sport and look like I, I will reiterate, reiterate again. You don't know. You could, we can look at this podcast six months from now, like, damn, we was wrong, buddy. These boys cooking, you know, could very well happen. But, you know, how I feel today, you know, just from what I'm seeing, man, it does not inspire confidence at all. It just makes me wonder, like, what are they doing? Like, if you look at a company, you know, some companies do this where, you know, they legendary CEO lives, leaves or whatever, or dies or whatever, and they just try to hold on to that, you know, that old and just try to keep selling that when, Sometimes, man, you just got to go and put your new footprint on it, man. You got to put your step on it and be like, man, this is the Dennis Allen, New Orleans Saints. This is how we coming. You know what I'm saying? We about to be a RPO offense and we're going to do this, that, and the other. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, whatever. Like, I'm just saying that, but it could be whatever it is. Instead of, it's just like, man, look, we, people, we, we love what we did in 2008 and we're going to do that again. <laughs> Bring it. They, they want the old thing back, bro. Bring that old thing back. So, what? How? How do you see this? This the rest of this off season playing out? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I still, I think, guess the Morton guy's gonna be wide receiver coach. I don't know. I think we still got some work to do in offense. Um, I really do think they're gonna try to bring James back. Um, but I don't think, I don't think that's like a foregone conclusion. I don't think they're like sold on Jameis. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, I could, I could easily see them, you know, trying to jump in the trade market for like a Jimmy G or, uh, you know, like you said, Wentz. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they'll go to Wentz direction though. I don't know if they're. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think they will either. That's more about just me. Yeah. Just, just wanting. I'm wanting it. One. I feel like. I feel like it's gonna be Jameis or Teddy Bridgewater. Mm. I just feel like that. Like it's gonna be like the winners. Jameis went five and two. Teddy went what four and one or five and one or whatever it was. Or five and zero. I can't remember. He didn't lose again, did he? I don't know. No. I not. just go, I feel like it's gonna be one of those safe, he's a winner types. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the route they're gonna go. It's gonna be defensive driven, run game driven, and they're gonna go nine and eight or eight and seven or whatever. Just enough to be annoying, bro. You know, it's like annoying as team. Purgatory, bro. It's purgatory, it's purgatory, purgatory man. Just like <laughs> it's like what are we doing here? You know, and you're just wasting like all this good, you know, everybody's gonna be the older. You know, um, Cam Jordan to be older. You know, okay, CJ, we, we CJ Jordan the Johnson going to want to get paid. We drafted Cam Jordan's replacement, bro. That's all good. <laughs> who, who the hell knows where he's going to be? Like, <laughs> I don't even know. I literally thought, I, I was just thinking today, and I tweeted, I was like, I, I forget Peyton Turner's on the team. Uh, I 100% forget he he's a member of the Saints. Forget, man. And I want to know, is Zach Bond oh. going to be on this team? Like, why not use him as a fifth rusher? I just don't get it. <laughs> like, you would you would guarantee that you single up Davenport and Cam Jordan. I mean, I know you can't do that every step. I get it. Like, I know. Right. But at least, like, you know, on passing downs on, you know, third and – 11 or whatever, like, why not bring in Zach Bond as a, a fifth rusher? Like, why? 
Like Rams do it all the time. Yeah. So. But I mean, I, I might even say this, bro. You know, we we jumped on recorded tonight. The the peep becoming OC thing. When they make their milk toast, DC hire, bro. We not we get we not we not doing one. It's gonna doing be one. milk toast as hell, man. Michael Michael Will Hoyt. <laughs> Defensive coordinator, bro. It's coming. I'm telling you, I, I I don't I don't know that for sure, but like it would just it just it just fits. It fits. And, and you know, one funny thing is everyone assumes that the defense would just continue to be as good as good as it has been. Good as it has been with Dennis Allen as HC, but what happens is Dennis Allen becomes the head coach and he has to spread his attention to other places. Yep. And the defense, you know, we see it with, you know, we saw like Vic Fangio or you know, all these defensive head coaches who are great defensive coaches, they become head coaches and their defenses ain't all that no more. Mm. Because, I mean, they're not defensive coordinators anymore. They're not sitting in a defensive uh, room every day. They're not sitting there watching the cornerbacks all day and, uh, you know, watching the defensive line. They're not doing that anymore. You know, they, they got to look at offense. You got to focus on offense, focus on a QB, focus on this, you know, do press, all this stuff. You know, it's a completely different job. So I think the assumption that, oh, the Sage defense is going to be clicking, you know, man, we got all the good players, they're going to be clicking just as normal. I don't think that's – I mean, I think you're a fool if you believe that. I think you're a fool. You that's know? a really good point. Really good so, point. So imagine if the Saints defense, you know, they say the defense is fine, but just not as good. Say it's like the 11th ranked defense or whatever. Have you want to rank it? 11, 12 ranked defense. And you got a struggling offense. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> that's, uh, oh. that's just, uh, you know? And how do you fix that, you know? I don't, I don't know. Um, thoughts on. Number one sus- suspect on Olivia Benson's wall, Deshaun Watson having a wish list of wanting to go to either the Vikings or the Bucks. Oh, man, don't get me started on that shit, bro. Nope. Like mm-hmm. I said, man, like that dude, like to me, I just personally, and, you know, maybe I understand why he can't say nothing now because it's all stuck in litigation or whatever, but just the fact that he's putting shit out there, and he's putting it out there, him or his people putting it out there that, oh, he's trying to find a team that's the best fit for him. Motherfucker, you you are a walking SVU case, motherfucker. Like, you <laughs> like, bro, dun, 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 dun. like, you about to be suspended by the league at some point, bro. Like, have some kind of contrition to where you at least show that you got some improvement to do as a person, man. Like, at least show that, man. But he's taking this approach that, like, he's getting screwed. Like, he's he's a target. You know who you else know? had that same approach? Kevin Spacey. Yeah. The best believe. Most Ryan, of them do. Ryan Singer. <laughs> oh, that's definitely. <laughs> Kelly, uh, R. Kelly. Yep. <laughs> I got a target on my back, man. <laughs> Fighting fight for his life, bro. Fighting for my fucking life. So, you know, I don't know, man. I'm worried people like that. Yeah. Because um, it, 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 I get it. I get a lot of things, man. I'm like, man, fuck all that, man. Bring them in. Boy, top five. I get it from a football standpoint. Nah. Hey. But, oh, man, yeah. that, that'll be hard for me. Ugh, ugh, football standpoint, you, you, you can't argue it. But, like, moral standpoint, morality, like, I, I've, I've said it. I've said it on this podcast. If if this and I don't think they would. I don't think they would. But if they were to trade for Deshaun Watson Brown, I don't know if I could continue to do this podcast anymore. And I and I know it's it is it has become something and we've built it and it's continuing to to build and we're in a good good place with the podcast right now. But if they traded for Deshaun Watson, bruh, like how how can I, me as a social worker, right? Do a podcast where the starting head, starting quarterback, has 
sexual abuse allegations when in my career, I have to go sometimes talk to kids about being sexually abused. Huh. No, nah, man. Couldn't, couldn't do it, man. I just, it just doesn't jive. It just, it just wouldn't jive. I, I don't think, like, at that point, just bring me Jimmy G, bro. Like, let's just be, just be shitty with Jimmy G. But you know what Jimmy G going to do. He going to do just enough to get you close to the playoffs or right. <laughs> Even, like, I was talking about Jimmy G with my girl. Again, she's a 49ers fan. And I was just like, I watched a lot of 49ers games recently. And Jimmy G has Debo. He has Ayuk. He got an all pro tight end in George Kittle. He got a running game. And when he was missed, when like some of the passes he misses, bro, right. it's crazy. Bruh, like, it, like they are wide, o- wide open. Like you got, you got Kyle Shanahan and all the plays, bro. <laughs> so you go, someone, so someone. And the Saints front office is going to be like, well, we just promoted Pete Carmichael. Or just promote, I guess promoted. Pete Carmichael is now the offensive coordinator. But there's no Sean Payton. We got Adam Troutman, Bynum Nemo. Who knows? We might get some offensive help. Like, how is I, – I don't know, but I just <laughs> – you know how it is, bro. People, they'll, they'll go and watch that game. He played against us when, you know, the, you know, the yeah. fucking – and they're like, oh, this this is the this is the Jimmy G we're, we're getting. We can get that guy. You know how it is convincing them yeah. about what you're getting. I just I don't know. I, but I, I I'll say this again: if the Saints were to trade for Deshaun Watson, I, I I it would be very difficult for me to continue to to do this pod. I just it just would just feel so icky with me, so yeah. icky. Um, but that being said, I am. Pretty fucking sure there's a team that's going to trade for him this offseason. Oh yeah, like it's like it's going to happen. Um, anything else? About, I just real quick. So, some of the players, the, some of the best players. I'm going to go weapons, offensive players that Jeff Ireland drafted when he was the Dolphins GM. Charles Clay, okay, mm-hmm. Dra- draft him in the, in the sixth round. Um, Lamar Miller was a good player. Grabbed him in the fourth round. Ryan Tannehill, that's a quarterback, you know, first round pick. And that's about it, bro. <laughs> take, the, take the list is there. He was the GM of the Dolphins from the to, from 2008 to 2012. And pass on Matt Ryan. Pass on Matt Ryan, and and, and took Jake Long and Jake Long instead. Um, not great. And then, I guess the best wide receiver he drafted would have been Rashard Matthews in 2012 mm-hmm. in round seven. Bro, it ain't great. Yeah. It ain't great, bro. I don't know who's gonna be picking these offensive players in this draft, but. Cool. He uh, did well with the Saints. They did pick AK and pick Mike Thomas. But did he pick those players or did Sean pick those players? Though? That's the question. I don't know. That's the question. They also picked Adam Troutman and Cesar Ruiz. The first, the first time I watched Michael Thomas at, at Ohio State, Ohio State, I said this when I did the podcast with Underhill. I love me some Laquan Treadwell, but I watched Michael Thomas. And I said Michael Thomas would like he how he ran his routes at Ohio yeah. State. I said he, he's a, he's a saint. Like he would fit perfectly in Sean Payton's offense because I had I had had a, a long history of what Sean Payton likes and players and what he goes for in his office, and it was all there. So when he got drafted, it made complete sense. Now. I don't know, bro. I have, I have no clue. No clue. Um, like, is Pete Carmichael going to look at, you know, Trillon Burke and be like, mm-hmm. I could figure this out. I could do something with this. Is he going to do that? Like, I don't know, man. It's, 
it just takes like a whole like I hate keep going back to Sean Payton, but it just takes a lot away where it's like, yeah, I know Sean Payton can envision this to some with this. Yes. You know, it's like we don't have that person to say like, oh, I know they could they could do something with this. I know they can take this player and get the best out of them. You know, you just like that just doesn't exist anymore. Um, it doesn't. And So, like, there are some players that are just easy, right? Easy evals. Mm-hmm. Jameson Williams. Yeah. Easy eval, bro. Don't, don't need to watch many games with him to know. But take a player, like, I think you said a, a great example you gave was Traylon Brooks. Another example where it's like, I, I, I'm split on him and what I see is Drake London. You, you, if you evaluate him, is someone saying he's big, but can he separate from wide receivers? Or can someone say, okay, he's big. What I can do with that to put him in the slot, mm-hmm. line him up against slot cornerbacks who are smaller, line him up against linebackers, and he can out, he can out, you know, like just, just yeah. little shit, bro. Just, just who, who's exactly. making those calls? I don't. I don't know. I, I'd be, I would I love know. to know. I would love to know. But fascinating. It's funny. You, it's funny you said. You know, it was announced today that the the Falcons released uh, Dante Fowler. Also, yeah. forever fuck Dante Fowler for giving fucking Ryan Ramchek that smoke <laughs> that led to that that Drew interception in the NFC Championship, bro. Nobody um, ever talk about that. Nobody does, bro. I I, I remember it, bro. Um. And I saw that, and I was like, "Good on the Falcons to be like, you know what? It's just it's not gonna work out between us. You, you don't, don't, you don't, that. you're not, you're not what we need. We are just gonna separate, bro. Why is seasonal Reese on, on on my team, bro? Man, we could still get like a little six round for him, <laughs> bro. I would be, I would be fine with a a seven, a conditional seventh rounder that is like a. A, a meal at Raising Cane's at this point, bro. Just get him clean. Get, get him gone, bro. Get him gone. I, I'm sorry if, if any of Reese's family listens to this podcast. I, I apologize. I apologize. Don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> I tell y'all, don't listen to this podcast. Because we going to shit all over that nigga off this podcast, bro. All day. <laughs> oh, um, so we we never got the white well. Maybe we'll get him now that he's not the same head coach. But um, uh, like unbeknownst to me, there was like I guess CD on Twitter put something out about him wanting to start a podcast and who we need to link up with. And the amount of our followers, whether it's people who follow us on Twitter, people who follow our, our pod account on Twitter, that hit up CD Deuce and said. You got to go on the same Twitter podcast. You got to link with Adam. You got to link with Ryan. You know that was that that took that took me a little bit by surprise. Uh, wasn't expecting that. I think it really goes to sh- just goes to show, man, like what we've been able to create in such a short period of time. Uh, yes. Very very proud of it. Please don't trade for fucking Deshaun Watson Saints. I, I like doing this. Please don't ruin this. Um, and to see like this stuff. Uh, the outreach completely blew me away. Uh, we appreciate y'all. If CD's out there, CD's listening, bro. You you gotta this. The we'll roll out the red carpet for you, bro. Like anytime you want to come on, you jump on. You want to come up with us? Feel free. I will. You be, hey, you could be you, bro. Oh, please! You, I was just about to say, bro. Please know that if CD gets on this podcast. It will be the most niggerish fucking podcast episode. <laughs> like, it'll be the point where CD might upset some, upset some teammates, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> well, we got your back, bro. Yeah, we, we got you, CD. Uh, so hit, hit us up, CD. Like, you are the next goal. We can't see you on this podcast. 
Oh, uh, we <laughs> we light up the internet for a little bit, bro. Like it, we would cause some some havoc in our little sub, you know, sub sub culture of of safe swear. It we it would be very entertaining. Um, but, I mean, that's it. Today's Wednesday. I'm pretty sure a defensive coordinator is going to be hired. You know, <laughs> Ryan Nielsen, Chris Richard, Mike Wilhoyd. I at this point, I'm just like just like whatever, bro. Don't really care. Um, and I don't know, and I, maybe it shouldn't have, but the Pete hire has kind of tempered my excitement for free agency a bit. Yeah. Because it's just like, okay, this, this is what's going to be. All right. I get, I get it. <laughs> you know, yeah. They could change that the first week of free agency and they go out and they get someone. I'm like, oh, okay. Don't no, make some moves. It'd be nice to see, but at this point, I I, I already know it's coming, bro. It's gonna be. Man, I, I just want Pete, like, them to put Pete on a person and just let drop his nuts, man. Like, just pull him out. Like, bro, this is what I'm gonna do. You know, I want to see a whole new Pete. You know, like, you know, man. Saints fans, man, we are just starving, man. Like, gotta give us something, bro. Like, we done went through like five years of. You know, being very good but not good enough. Mm. That you drop this, you know, mediocre season on us. Like we want, like we need something, man. Like we starving. No, we're not the worst team in the league. We're not the Jets. You know, nothing like that. But we need, like, we need to feel something, man. We need like, some kind of excitement, bro. Like if you, mm. if this was like a relationship, this is like year eighteen in the marriage. Mm-hmm. No, you know, and, you know, you pull up, you pull up, from, you pull up from work, and you sit in the car for about twenty minutes. Oh, 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 oh! Go in there, and they got some baked chicken and shrimp fettuccine. Oh no, I didn't, I didn't even get that, bro. <laughs> and get that some day, some two day old baked chicken and to, to, towards towards the end of mine, bro. I would get home, you know, she had she had some seafood cooked, and I'm allergic to seafood, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Knew it was time, bro. Trying to kill your fucking ass. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. I guess I just worked two jobs, just got home. I guess I'm just gonna have to just go get some some food, huh? This one left. All right, cool. <laughs> it's you know, you know, you know, you know what it is. I, for yeah. example, where we out with the Saints, you know, they, you know, we want something exciting. You know, maybe get, you know, maybe surprise us a little. BTSM, you know, maybe you want to get some handcuffs and ball, get some, get freaky. Oh. No, nah, bro, we we get we get we get missionary, and if we lucky, we lucky, they might they might they might give us some doggy, bro. Like this is where shit is yeah, right now for the space. Like, missionary, missionary lights off, <laughs> covers covers over you. You can't even see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting, bro. Disgusting. Can we get some production? I want a tripod, a video tape. No get... red lights. No red lights, man. Ah, oh, oh, this is where we at, bro. Where's where we at? It, it, you know what's funny? We we do all this. We doing all this shit and we wrapping up. It would take just. It would just take one move, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just, what? Like if free agency starts, it would just take one move. We'd be like, oh, 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 shit. Okay, all right. Bring us back now. Nah, I said we can't bring us back. <laughs> I want to do a quick shout out. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, quick shout out to, to Ross Jackson, who yeah. mentioned, uh, probably mentioned it on Locked On Saints. And I I was saying it kind of in jest during the season. But he, he was thinking like, yeah, hey, maybe, maybe Saints should call up Baltimore and see what they want for Huntley, bro. Mm. Yeah, I, no, I, I said I said it in just during the season that they should do that just because like every time we you know he he's not a finished product but he showed a lot though man he looked like like he, as a pastor he looked better than Jalen Hurts is I'm just saying I put it like this like if if Malik Willis showed what he showed you'd be fine. Ooh. That's a rookie. That's oh, a rookie. That's a rookie. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, absolutely. Now, you know, now with Hundley, you don't know, you know what I'm saying, as far as like ceiling and stuff, like maybe that's his ceiling. We don't know. But I'm just saying, like as a rookie, if a week us like showed that as a rookie, you'd be like, okay, we got something going. Like that would be the view. Yeah. Because he showed a lot more than like fucking even Justin Fields, like, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I guess as far as like the the process of the game where you know it was like Justin Fields, it was it was a struggle, but then you'll do like some amazing run or play. I just I'm just saying like Lovely and Lamar like passed the miles or they kind of simple, bro. Yeah. Bro, bro. No, I don't want to start that controversy. But I tweeted at Ross and I said with Lamar's A, he's gotten some nagging injuries, you know, these couple of seasons. The way he plays the game in terms of how if you know he runs a lot. And I know COVID's taking like a nosedive in terms of like cases, but that man still is not vaccinated. So he could get COVID again at some point. So like what I don't think the Ravens would want to trade Huntley because they have a good fucking backup, which is hard to find in the NFL like quarterback. Hard to find, man. Hard to find. It's hard, it's it's super hard to find a franchise quarterback, but to find a backup to your franchise quarterback that if you're Franchise quarterback goes down, like you feel like you might have a chance. Like that is rare. Um, but do you I'm, think uh do you think Taysom should remain a backup? I think Taysom should play offense, not at quarterback. You you wouldn't keep him at QB two? Nope. Nope. I would not. Man, got some wins under his belt, bro. Wins. Uh, Q, QB so, wins. So does Jimmy Garoppolo, Ryan. <laughs> So Garoppolo, bro. No, <laughs> Tate. T- you know he got paid. Whatever, whatever. But I don't know if anyone in the building has nuts to tell him this. But I'd be like, you know what? This your little hybrid tight end role. That that's you, bro. That's you. That's you. That's that's you. Take it on a hundred percent. Get your foot well. Put your weight back up. That's you. And then you maybe you to be a dog, like. Bro, like it is not out of the realm of possibility at all. That's what I would do. My goal would be my, this. This is me. I'm finding a guy. I don't know who the fuck that guy is. Is it Huntley? Is it fucking Carson Wentz? Teddy? Oh, Teddy? Uh, Jimmy G? Uh, uh, whoever. That's the quarterback stop. Jameis, don't want to leave him out. That's the quarterback stopgap I'm rolling with this season. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting Taysom in his hybrid role. And then you – at least then you have Taysom and Finding Nemo. Maybe he has a bounce. Man, if Finding Nemo could just get back to just his rookie season, like, that's <laughs> fine, bro. Like, <laughs> man, this man had 50 targets his rookie season. <laughs> hey, man, be uh, – you could be uh, – Josh Hill. No, not even Josh Hill. What's the tight end? I got concussed. Oh, Corey oh, Fleener, bro. <laughs> like, can you give me a little Fleener action, bro? <laughs> bro? And people, and I get it. Like, I, people hate on Fleener. I get it. But, like, find an emo. Like, don't, don't even, put, don't, don't even insult Kobe Fleener by putting, right. like, by talking like, find, find an at emo all. To, at, at all, all, bro. Fleener made some plays in there. <laughs> it's, it's salty. Um, but it just it just it would just take one one move, one move. Saints fans, Russell Wilson, kiss him, kiss him, go out, gone. Stop, stop it, stop it. Like you think yeah. Russ gonna want to come here and play with fucking Pete Carmichael? Hey, unless, man, man. unless Russ is like, man, I could come there and just just fucking make the offense exactly how I want it. Maybe I don't know, but. For realistic purposes, kiss it goodbye. Um, yeah. yeah. Car, Derek Carr getting extended ain't happening. It ain't happening. Um, Aaron Rodgers, all happy with Green Bay, ain't happening. It ain't happening. So, you know, look like Kurt gonna be, you know, gonna be with the Vikings. So, those off the table, pretty much, you know. So, it is what it is, man. Saints got this poverty, bro. Like, get the. <laughs> I and I, one of the, I think the best thing you said on this episode is just like, 
and I, and I believe it. Like, I don't, I really don't think they're going to try to address the quarterback position in the draft. I, I don't no. see it. I don't see it anymore. Uh, they ain't got the nuts. Stop, stop the mob. They, they barely had the nuts with Sean Payton. They don't have the nuts. We got this pressure tonight. Tell you, man. It is wild to me that the man who called an onside kick to start the second half of the Super Bowl in the Super Bowl show the biggest nuts that you could Ever. In, a, in, a, in a moment. Ever. Like, do not get that twisted. Like, that just falls, right? Because if that don't work, whew, it worked. Led them to win the Super Bowl. That takes nuts. That takes the just boldness. And to see the milk toastness that is permeating through these decisions is disappointing. Because you would think, like, I, I would be inspired, right? Like, like shit, like, our, our old head coach, like, he fucking did an onside kick to fucking start the second half of the Super Bowl. Like, maybe I need to change shit up. Maybe I need to be a little bold in my decision making. Maybe I need to mix shit up. Not for not because I'm worried about my job security, but what's best for this team. Right. And then they're missing what made Sean Payne great. Like what 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 inspired this great run in the past three, four, five years? Sean blew it up. He he fired a lot of his friend head coaches that he hired back in 2006. He let them go. They brought in, you know, they brought in new life into the front office with, you know, Jeff Harlan. They let go a lot of longtime scouts and brought in some new faces. You know, sometimes you got to change shit up, man. <clears throat> and I'm not just saying change it up just for the sake of changing it up, but with intent. Like, you have to have intent. You have to understand, like, you know, what do I intend to do with these changes? And let me go out and seek people that can help me mm. make these changes. And it's like, I just hadn't seen that from them yet. Like, what are we doing? What? We always come back to this. What's the vision? Uh-oh. <laughs> what is it? But, I, but I, just, I don't even have a problem seeing the vision. I know what the vision is. Oh, we know. We, know we, that, that has been answered for us tonight. The vision is safety, baby. Just be safe. Safe, comfort. Don't, don't push the edge. Don't go outside the box. It, it, is, it is what it is. And it's and as Saints fans is if you the faster you can realize that it's come to that that we're it's a safety it's safe it's comfort the, the, you know easier it is to, to to transition man just just it, it is what it is don't get your hopes up this has a and I'm saying this we don't have a single player drafted free agency hasn't started has makings of seven to eight eight to eight nine to eight written all over it but. Uh-huh. Absolutely. It just does. <laughs> it just does. Um, whatever. I don't know. That, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> well, we're going to get out of here. Hope we were able to provide y'all a little, some, some solace, some, some preaching. But just just be, be it's going to be okay. I, I, I feel better. I feel better clearing my chest off. Feel better that I don't have to like, bro, you know, when you're bro, I, was, I was literally about to come home tonight and look up the the draft classes that Jay Gruden had as as the Washington head Ain't coach. Ain't that fucked up? Ain't that fucked right. up? That would have been fun, right? I, I just because I wanted to see what like like what was his offensive what was his offensive talent? Yeah, man, I was gonna look up some Jay Gruden stats. To- you know, football outsiders and shit like that. I was about to, you know, deep dive. But, you know, because I mentioned them this I mentioned them this morning on the Discord because I just got worried about them. You know, and I was like, okay. And then I saw that he was getting interviewed today. I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this is something that's going to happen. Nope. Like, literally after I tweeted, I tweeted like a long deer tribe about why I liked them. Literally right after that, Saints are going to roll with Pete Carmichael. <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
Ain't that some shit, bro? Ain't that some shit? Just don't don't even get me started. Don't get me started. Anyway, we've we recapped it. We, we, we you know it. You know, take it what it is. It's, it's gonna be gonna be all right. Um, we'll we'll be back next week. I'm t- I'm warning fans right now. When when the Saints hire uh, you know hire their Mixos D coordinator, I don't, I don't want you to. We're not doing a, an episode. We're not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, bro. Um, so that said, enjoy the week. We're out of here. Don't let these du- don't let these dudes mess with you guys too much. Gonna be all right. We're out. Peace. Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.